So Dr. Eric Topol, one of the most respected cardiologists in the world, recently sounded the alarm on high protein diets. He argues that very high protein intake, especially leucine rich animal protein may increase the risk of atherosclerosis. That's heart disease. And while I respect Dr. Topol, I disagree. Now you could say, how could I push back against someone with his credentials? Dr. Topol isn't just a cardiologist. He's a pioneer in digital medicine. He's the founder of the Scripps Research Translational Institute and one of the most influential voices in modern healthcare. He's got a big vision and he's done big things. Me questioning him feels like a medical resident trying to debate the dean of the med school, and it's a little audacious. But you know what else was audacious? Go back about 70 years when Ansel Keys was blaming dietary fat for heart disease in the 1950s. He didn't have full context. The data wasn't clear. And sometimes the boldest voices need a second look. I wish someone would have taken a second look at his. Think about all the damage that was done. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the flaws in Topol's theory as I see them and what evidence exists to demonstrate that we don't need to be avoiding protein to avoid atherosclerosis. And if you're eating more protein to improve your muscle and your bones and you're worried about this theory as many people have brought it to me, you've got to listen to this and share it with anyone that may also be worried about this risk because after all, heart disease will kill most of us. We should all be afraid of heart disease. All right, first, some definitions. Part of the problem with understanding heart disease is the darn nomenclature. And at least we're not talking about cholesterol here. This is a story about this thing called mTOR or mTORC. So let's break down what mTORC is. So mTORC is an acronym. It stands for Mechanistic Target of Rapamycin Complex. And we're talking specifically about mTORC1. This is a nutrient sensing pathway. It plays a key role in cell growth and cell repair. And when activated, it tells your body to build, to make new proteins, to grow muscles, to strengthen your bone and to regenerate tissue. It's a powerful switch and it flips your body from maintenance mode into growth mode. But like any powerful tool, it needs to be used wisely. So I'm gonna make Topol's case for him. I'm gonna be clear, I'm gonna be fair, and I'm gonna say it as I understand it. Now, it's interesting when you read the articles written about Dr. Topol and the terminology that he uses, it's worth noting that he reports personally following a Mediterranean style, mostly plant-based diet. He says he hasn't eaten red meat in over 40 years and tends to avoid ultra-processed foods. The latter part, I agree with. He doesn't claim to be vegan, he does eat some fish, some poultry, some dairy, some eggs. So when he cautions against high animal protein intake, you have to remember that this is coming from a perspective rooted in decades of exposure to messaging around plant-forward nutrition. Now, in his Substack and in his recent Wall Street Journal interview, he says he's actually increased his protein to what he considers a healthy level, but not to the, quote, very high level he sees some people recommending. He's eating around 90 to 100 grams per day. And for his body weight, which is reported to be around 80 kilograms, that's about 1.1 to 1.25 grams per kilogram. So actually, this is kind of near the threshold that I talk about of 1.3 grams per kilogram per day of ideal body weight or 0.8 grams per pound per day of ideal body weight. So it's funny that we're actually not that far apart. His concern is that excessive protein, particularly again, high leucine proteins like those from animal products, activates mTORC1 in immune cells, especially macrophages. And I actually have the study that shows that here. This study from 2024 explored this mechanism in death and researchers found that in both mice and human macrophage cultures, Elevated levels of leucine from high-protein diets led to persistent mTORC activation. This chronic stimulation inhibited autophagy, the cellular cleanup process, while increased the formation of foam cells. And if you're not familiar with foam cells, these are macrophages that have picked up cholesterol that are then the basis for what becomes atherosclerosis, arterial plaque, etc. This pathway then directly contributes to a larger, more unstable plaque burden, which of course would ultimately result in heart attack. The implication then is that mTORC remaining active in immune cells without pause accelerates plaque buildup and vascular damage. And of course, again, this is going to lead to the risk of heart disease. All right. So I think he's right about that mechanism. I read the research. I read the studies. I do think it checks out. But here's what we have to remember. 
Animal models don't tell a great story and shouldn't be extrapolated without human data to support these recommendations. And the human data here is very minimal. There are only cell studies in large population cohorts where heart disease and terrible diets are the standard. So mechanistically, there is a very important piece of this puzzle missing in Tobel's theory. In fact, there's a massive difference between what they showed in that study and those Petri dish studies of chronic mTORC activation and what we see in the real clinical life of humans eating a good diet, which is intermittent healthy activation. And this is where it gets interesting because multiple studies, including those on resistance training, time restricted feeding, protein cycling, all of these studies show that pulsed mTORC activation actually leads to cellular resilience. It's not a net negative, it's a net positive. Intermittent activation turns on anabolic pathways, supports mitochondrial function, and then allows time for cleanup through autophagy during fasted states. If you look at this paper from 2021, it demonstrated that intermittent mTORC activation in skeletal muscle triggered through resistance exercise and timed amino acid intake, improved systemic metabolism, insulin sensitivity, and it actually reduced inflammatory signaling, which is part of what Topol was saying happens with chronic mTORC activation. This study showed that intermittent mTORC activation promoted beneficial muscle remodeling without the detrimental inflammatory pathways seen in chronically activated macrophages. It's a strong counterpoint to the idea that all mTORC activation is harmful. With all of these things, especially around nutrients, context, timing, tissue specificity, all of these things absolutely matter. And this aligns with what we see clinically. People who eat protein-dense meals spaced out over time, especially when paired with exercise, tend to build muscle, maintain metabolic health, and more. So please remember that mTORC isn't evil. It's an essential part of building tissue. In fact, good luck maintaining or building muscle and bone without it. The trouble starts when it's always on. Like many hormones, mTORC should be pulsed. And here's the kicker. Leucine isn't the only thing that activates mTORC. In fact, if we're worried about chronic activation, leucine as the trigger doesn't make sense. No one is eating steak all day. So then what else can trigger mTORC? Well, high energy diets do it. Like, guess what? The standard American diet. High insulin spikes from processed food. Carbohydrates, again, standard American diet. Chronic inflammation, again, standard American diet, and honestly, most people. Trans fats, ultra-processed food, all these things can keep mTORC switched on, especially in macrophages. So what's likely contributing to plaque formation? All those things, not leucine-rich protein sources. But remember, even then, it's not the mTORC activation itself. It's the frequency. It's the context. It's the timing. So again, this is similar to hormones. So think of like insulin, for example, natural rhythmic insulin secretion. It's great. Chronically elevated insulin results in diabetes, heart disease, and death. Exposure, context, timing matters. But we need mTORC. If you're on a bone health journey, we need mTORC to build muscle. We need mTORC to build bone. You can't grow anything. You can't get stronger. You can't rebuild without it. If you suppress mTORC constantly, you'll die of catabolic disease of aging. I almost guarantee it. So I'll give you the details of how we deal with this clinically in the real world. This is part of the masterclass that we offer. And if you haven't been to our masterclass and you are on a bone health journey, I strongly encourage you to do it. It's absolutely free. And we go over the top five mistakes that we see people make on their bone health journey that limits their success. I would love to time collapse your journey for you and show you that these top five mistakes are easy to make. One of them would be listening to this type of information around mTORC and not eating leucine-rich uh, protein sources. Uh, but we go through those things, have time for Q&A, link in the description below, or you can head to our website at osteocollective.com. Okay, so what do we do now in the real world? Well, we need to get strategic. We have to eat meals, not constant snacks. We focus on whole foods, not processed junk. We lead with protein-forward meals and allow time for autophagy in between. And most importantly, we track our muscle and bone. We don't shoot for someone else's protein goal. We find our protein goal. Even Dr. Topol, who is, I would say, very cautious around protein, still eating 100 grams of protein a day. Remember, that's almost 1.3 grams per kilogram for his size. So ultimately, we don't want to suppress mTORC. We want to cycle mTORC. 
We shouldn't avoid leucine. We shouldn't avoid leucine-rich protein sources, but we need to use them wisely. They're powerful. You want mTOR to turn on after a meal and after exercise and then give it space to turn off, stop snacking between meals. And that's where the magic happens. The strength, the repair, the resilience, the reduction in inflammation, not the increase in inflammation. The reduction in cardiovascular risk, not the increase in cardiovascular risk. Those things happen in the time between your meals. They happen when you're resting. They happen when you're repairing. So ultimately, we need to optimize our protein intake from high quality sources. By definition, that means a food source that has an appropriate amino acid profile, i.e. high leucine. This language is really confusing for people, and I've had several TOC community members ask me about it, so I wanted to bring this forward to everyone because this is a really, really critical point, and a doctor like Dr. Topol, who is misrepresenting what the literature says and probably leaning on some of his own personal biases in this situation and recommending that we avoid leucine because of chronic in torque activation when that's not what happens in real life when you are following a diet that is a whole food-based diet that has high quality protein sources. We do not see chronic activation of mTORC and therefore shouldn't be considered to be at risk for developing plaque through the mechanism that he's suggesting. That's it. Remember that life should be about honoring your health, making memories, and aging with strength and grace. I'll see you in the next video.